Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a Tip Tuesday. I'm here to show you how to modify a heat-friendly wig. I have on my head Lustrous by The Wig Company. I just recently reviewed this piece and I have a second Lustrous right here. And I'm gonna show you how you can take a heat-friendly wig like this and straighten it you could add more curl to it you can make it your own so if either you have a wig that you currently don't know what to do with because it's not working for you you could try some of these techniques to see if you can make it a style that you love or if you're in the wig closet so to speak and nobody really knows that you wear wigs and you'd like the opportunity to change up your hairstyle just like you would if you were styling your bio hair, then you could purchase two of the same wig. You could keep one as it comes out of the box and you can modify another. And I'll be showing that to you in this video. So if you wanna know more about this, come along with me. Whenever you do a styling video or a tutorial video, I always feel like there needs to be a disclaimer at the beginning because Inevitably, somebody will have an opinion that what you're doing or showing is incorrect. When it comes to the wig journey, there are lots and lots of different ways to approach it. Lots of different styles out there. Some people love them, some people don't. Lots of things that you can do with wigs. And taking heat to wigs to modify and style is another one of those areas where there's a lot of different things that you can do. Nothing is perfect, especially if you aren't a trained stylist. So my disclaimer is what I'm doing and the tools that I'm using work for me and my skill level. You may have a higher level of skill and therefore could use different tools. You may have a higher level of training and experience, or you may have never worked with wigs ever before. Each of us has to find our own way. My videos are here to help encourage you and give you ideas, but I never pretend to be an expert. So if you watch what I'm doing in this video and have an opinion about it, that's wonderful and I'd love your tips and tricks, but just keep in mind that you are gonna have to find your own way with this and what works for me may or may not work for you. I'm gonna show you two different tools in this video to straighten this piece. And there are lots of other tools that you can use. So again, I would say uh, practice and learn what works best for you. And I always encourage people to practice on either old wigs or purchase a really cheap Amazon wig and do your practicing on that. You can find Amazon wigs for around $20. And who knows, maybe you'll get a good one that you can even wear. But even if you don't, that's a $20 price tag on invaluable education. So I strongly encourage you to consider doing that if you'd like to learn some skills that will help you amp up your wig wearing journey. It can be so fun, but in the beginning, it's really challenging. Before we get started, I want to show you the two tools that I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. The first one is a Hot Tools Hot Airbrush. I have shown this in previous videos. I have a bunch of Hot Tools air, hot airbrushes. This one has a metal base and does have some boar's head bristles in it. Um, some people recommend that you stay away from those types of bristles on wigs and that you only use plastic hot airbrushes. I have shown hot, the plastic ones in videos where I'm taking a hot airbrush to a non-heat friendly synthetic because those do not get very hot. And I have found that if I want to modify a style on a heat-friendly synthetic, I typically need a little bit more heat than those put out. That's where a hot airbrush like this comes in. If you're not using it frequently, I don't think just a couple of passes with these bristles are going to be really that detrimental to a heat-friendly wig. And what I'm looking for is hot enough heat that I can really make a difference in that style. The other piece I'm gonna show you is this brand new tool by Tressalure called the Cool Flow, Cool Flow Dual Styler is what it's called. And basically it's a flat iron and it has cool air that comes out of the outside of it to help cool the hair. And one of the things to keep in mind when you're styling heat friendly wigs is 
What sets the style is the cooling process. So it is helpful, especially if you're putting curls into a heat-friendly wig, to have that extra cool air to help cool that curl and set it. I'm not gonna be using this to really cool, or to, sorry, curl in this video, but I really like this tool, so I thought I would use it to do the straightening. So those are the two tools that I'm gonna show you in this video. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put a thermal heat protectant on the wig. I just happen to have John Renault Heat Treat Thermal Spray. I've had this since the very beginning of my wig wearing journey. And so that's what I'm gonna use, but you can use whatever heat protectant you want. Um, you can use do some trial and error. I, I don't know if there's a better one out there. I don't take heat to wigs very often. And so I've had this for four years. You can see how much I have left. So I'm just gonna use what I have. But we protect the wig from the heat with a thermal protectant. And now I'm gonna start out with the hot air brush and show you how that one works. So basically I'm gonna turn it on. And then I'm just going to start going through the fibers, kind of combing through, relaxing. I like to kind of curl under so I get a little bit of an, an under curve on the wig. Now this one isn't going to give you a super sleek, straight look. So if you're just looking for more of a relaxed curl, kind of a softening of those fibers, this is a great option for you. Another thing to think about is heat-friendly wigs do need heat taken to them periodically in order to keep the ends from being frizzy and frayed, especially if the wig is rubbing up on clothing like this one is on me right now. And a hot airbrush like this can be so great for smoothing out those ends. So I highly recommend if you're going to be wearing heat-friendly wigs, get yourself a good hot airbrush that can help you with those ends. Okay, so I'm done with the hot air brush, and now you can see there's the side I didn't put any heat on, and here's the side that I used the hot air brush on. So you can definitely see the difference. And it's nice and soft and flowy. So it's a great way to refresh fibers on a worn wig. This one isn't a worn wig, but it will just really soften up those fibers. So that was the hot air brush, and you can see the difference. Now let's use the flat iron. All right, so before I use the flat iron, something I did that I didn't do with the, with the brush was I separated out the hair. That will make it easier for me to pass the flat iron through and not have to take huge chunks of hair. With the hot air brush, because this isn't a high density piece, it's a little bit easier to just work through the whole piece. But for this side, I'm going to do some separation and I just used a little alligator clip on the top here to hold the hair up, but you can use anything that works for you. All right, so now we're going to use the hot air, uh, this flat iron. It's just heating up right now. So let me get it heated up and then we'll get started. All right, so we're all heated up. And so now I'm just going to take the flat iron and this, you could do this with any flat iron. It does not have to be this particular one. This just happens to be what I have on hand. And then you can just run it through and warm up those fibers. Now, you're not going to hold it in place very long. Look at how quickly you turn this for you. That straightens that out. See how fast that works? So a flat iron is going to give you a much sleeker, straighter style than the hot air brush. It's also going to work a lot more quickly. So let's do that again. Let me grab this piece right here. And I'm just going to 
in one smooth motion, just work it through. And there you go. How easy is that? So if you're looking for, I suppose I could, uh, let me grab another clip here. Clipped up a little bit more hair than I did. So if you're looking for a really sleek, very straight style, a flat iron is really going to help you achieve that look really quickly. Look at that. All right, I'll speed it up. We'll work through the rest. Something I want to show you really quickly, if you have some pieces that are really kind of crimped up or if it's a really curly wig, one of the things that you can do to help with that is when you run the flat iron through, you can chase it with a comb and that will help a ton in getting those kinks out and getting it super, super straight. Now it takes a little bit of finesse to be able to do this with both hands um, and I'm not super experienced with this. Um, so for those of you new to this, don't look at me doing these things and think, oh, you, you must be good at this. I would never be able to do that. I'm really not. I'm just not afraid to try. And that's the key. So let's do that again. So I'm going to, hold on, let me, I have just a bit too much hair in here. All right. So I'm going to take this right here, make sure that I'm not in the way. I'm going to clamp it, and then I'm just going to chase it with my comb, just like that. And you have to move quickly, so you wanna make sure that you're all ready to go with your comb. Let's do that one more time. As soon as I clamp it, I'm gonna start moving it and I'm gonna start chasing it. That way I won't put any kind of a kink in at the top. All right, let's keep going. All right, everyone, so I'm finished, and this is what the finished product looks like. So this is the side I use the straightener on, this is the side I use the hot air brush on. And you can see the difference. This is very straight, and this one still has a little bit of bend and wave in it, but not as much as it had, which is this one right here. So you can really see that in the back. There's a little bit of bend, bend and wave here. And then look at how straight that is. I will put this on and, and tack some pictures on the end so you can kind of see how they, how they look unstraightened. So this is out of the box. And then once you've taken a straightener to it. But let me talk to you about some of the challenges with doing this with a wig. Number one, if you purchase a wig that is already curly or has a wave pattern, one of the things you don't know until you straighten it is how will the ends look? How do the layers look straightened? Um, my guess is many wigs that you purchase that are curly or wavy, the cut was put in based on the curl and wave pattern. So for example, 
You can see these ends are a little bit, you know, it's pretty sparse down here. And especially here on the side, you can see how that's a really irregular cut. And that's because the curl was put into the fiber and then the style was formed after the curl was already in there. So they did the cut based on how it was going to lay with the fibers curled and waved. So you may find that it doesn't look quite right <laughs> once straightened. Like right here, I would wanna do something about this. I just don't love the way these ends look because they're not cut for a straight style. So if you want to straighten a curly or wavy piece, you may find that you will have to do some trimming after you're finished to get those ends to look like they were intentional for a straight style. I think it can be a little bit easier to put curl into a straight piece because then you don't have as much to worry about with the ends. I think curls are just a lot more forgiving on kind of messy or uneven haircuts versus straight styles. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this. First of all, it doesn't look uniform because I use two different methods on it. But keep in mind, if you're looking at the ends here and thinking, well, that doesn't look very good, that has nothing to do with my straightening of it. I did not damage these fibers. They don't feel dry. They don't feel like they were burned or frayed. It really is just the nature of this style. And you won't know that until you put a straightening iron to it to know how it's going to turn out. So just keep that in mind and be prepared to maybe do a little trimming or don't buy a curly or straight piece thinking that you're going to straighten it. Maybe if you want a straight style, find a good straight style to purchase and know that if you want a curly style, you can always add curl and wave. And I will be doing a video showing you how to do that with this product. I just have to practice. I'm not great at curling with a flat iron. So I'm going to do some practicing. Then I will bring you another Tip Tuesday showing you how you can curl. Maybe even this piece, I'll recurl it with heat. So hopefully that helped you guys. And it gave you an idea for maybe a style like this that you could purchase uh, and then straighten it or change that style. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, I will link all of the products that I used in this video. So if you are looking for a hot tool and you like what you saw here, I will link those in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching and go watch my full review of this style if you're interested. That is on my YouTube channel and I would like to thank the wig company for sending me both of these pieces so that I could do these videos for you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.